What's up, COD fans? Welcome back to another episode of Fantasy Now. Why did I do that? I don't know. But we're talking all things Fantasy Call of Duty for you guys in this episode. Who was your top performers for last week? Who should you start? Who should you sit? And I think most importantly, going into this week, who do you need to pick up? A lot of questions on hand for you guys, but we're going to be able to bring you guys the answers without much consideration outside of making sure that you're setting up your fantasy team correctly going into this upcoming week. So let's go ahead and dig into this by taking a look first and foremost at which teams are active and which teams are inactive. Very important to know. So again, in group A, you're going to be dealing with London and Florida going up against each other first, and you've got Atlanta and OGLA. Very difficult pool, I think, if you're an OGLA majority owner, as you're going to be going up against, a, generally speaking, a pool that I think is very difficult to get out of, especially playing Atlanta first. Yikes. Lots of things to consider there when it comes to who do you start, who do you sit, if OGLA only plays two games, which they might. Going into Group B, you got Minnesota, Paris, Chicago, and Toronto, which, of course, leaves your other four, as you see them there in the inactives not playing. Now, again, remember that Toronto is playing up against Chicago. Minnesota is playing up against Paris first. So I only bring that forward, not necessarily to give you predictions, but just be mindful. If you are someone who holds on to people from Toronto and OGLA and you have other options, they might be better suited going with the other options because of who they're playing first. And the fact that, they, well, if they lose those first games, which you figure you might not have more than two games to actually see them getting points. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's go over our top performers, though, from last time at London. You're going to notice a pretty interesting trend here, and I'll see if you can find it before I mention it. Octane, very, very solid week for him. Your overall number one performer from Seattle, of all places, 97.35 points for him, rocking a 1.29 overall KD. A great week for Octane. You got Dens from Paris, Aqua from the LAG. And this is what's interesting is the fact that you don't have anybody from Chicago or Dallas until the fourth spot. Scump and Envoy will be there in four and five. Wuskin will have another great week here at London. And then you've got Clayster from Dallas, Apathy from Seattle, and then two more members from Chicago in Gunless Informal. Have you noticed the interesting thing about the top performers this week? The majority of them are AR players. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. It's a simple fact of how points are generally going in default leagues. Your AR players are just staying safer. They might not be getting the most amount of hill time in the world, but they're getting a lot of kills. And that's where a lot of the points you're going to be seeing are generated from, are those kills. Their KDs are all above 1.0. Well, everybody on this list is above 1.0. But take a look at your AR players. 1.29, 1.25 for Octane and Dens. Aqua, 1.11. Waskin, 1.44, and then you go down to near the bottom, Clayster, 1.08, but then you have Formal, 1.18. The players that are running mostly ARs are getting the higher KDs, which is why you're seeing more general points coming from them. Make sure you keep that in mind when you're talking about who you're starting and who you're sitting. What a great segue shift. We're talking about start or sit. Coming up next here for you guys again, I got to emphasize this one more time. You have to keep in mind who are your teams playing in the first round. Will they have a chance to see elongated play time and correct any mistakes that they happen to make in their opening games? Let's keep that in mind as we go into it. And again, I've picked a couple of players that are pretty high in the own percentage and maybe not the greatest points per week coming into it. So we'll start things off with Abizi from Atlanta. Again, the SMG player, almost 90% of you guys own him out there. So you're looking at this saying, is the 66.24 points that he was able to find at Minnesota worth starting? I know it's a pretty big consideration. The SMG role is a very important one. And honestly speaking, that stat line, not super great when it comes down to it for SMG players specifically. In his role, he actually finishes seventh overall, which is not bad, but it's mostly because of his points production that he's been able to find in domination. He's 18th overall in hard point at 27 points per uh, hard point map and 18th overall when it comes to being in the SND with only around 12 points per round. His dom totals are what are extremely impressive. Now you got to keep in mind that this is not a team that had the greatest of showcases in domination, having a couple of scary moments in their first game. And then you go back to New York where they kind of got smacked around a little bit on Hackney Yard. Technically speaking, by the statistics, 
Atlanta is the fifth overall best domination team. So with that in mind, do you start them? Do you sit them? Personally speaking, hold on. I think you sit them. Honestly speaking, it feels like Selium is going to be doing a lot of the work for this team. It feels like Simp's going to be doing a lot of the work for this team. And generally speaking, your AR players are going to find a lot of the free points. You're also keeping in mind that Priesta will likely be picking up a second AR if Selium doesn't. You figure probably more Selium than Priesta. But regardless, Abizi is one of those guys that is playing mostly the objective. So his KD is not going to be super, super high typically. Unless his team is popping off all around him and he's finding a number of entry kills, you don't necessarily think that he's going to be the greatest point to maker when it comes to things like hard point and surge. Domination, sure, maybe more so, but I'm a little bit more generally cautious than I am optimistic about what your other options are when it comes to the SMG role specifically. If that's what you have to fill out is just that SMG role, I think there are better options that will make you feel a little bit more safe with someone who doesn't necessarily play the entry role. So personally speaking, into this pool, with Atlanta being in it, again, they've got off to LA first, should be an easy one for them. But I think you still sit a BZ, knowing how they would likely match up versus Chicago. If they do end up matching up against each other, I think his point totals will go down by a lot. Going to our cities from Chicago, AR player, 95% of the leagues own him, 70.31 points per week. Not bad. His KD a little bit more on the shakier side, though, for an AR player. And then you see his point totals as they pop up over there on the right when it comes to him per mode. You look at him over the course of the rolls, he's right in the middle of the pack. Ninth overall AR player that's currently available. Ninth in the hard point. Tenth in the surge. Eighth in the dom. Not super great, to be completely candid for you. And if not, it's, it's what, 16 p total players that can be running an AR right now currently by draft buff. So I think the question mark stands of, do you start them? Do you sit them? Flat out, when you take a look at the fact that he's listed as an AR, yeah, he runs an AR alongside of formal, but is it worth actually picking him up and starting him in place of an AR spot? Maybe not, but I still think you start him. Uh, there's just not enough options this weekend in the AR category to take him off the board. You absolutely, I think, should be starting our cities, even though his last week was not necessarily the greatest. His overall is still very solid, and I think you really can't take away from that at the end of the day. Going to Pristini from Florida, he only got 55 points in his opening week at Minnesota. 65% of the leagues out there own him, so you're probably wondering, SMG player from Florida and Pristini, do you start him? Do you sit him? My first reaction is I think this Florida team is going to be really, really good if they end up running more of the 2AR setup. It's going to free Pristini up a lot more to make some incredible plays happen. He's technically the 21st overall SMG player as far as points participation goes in the overall category, but he's 11th in hard point. 14th in S&D, that Dom total is a little bit shaky on a team that does not look very great on Dom, at least didn't the first time that we saw him. So the question stands, do you start him? Do you sit him? I think you start him coming into this upcoming week. He's a very good option when it comes to pop-off potential for his squad, especially if you're looking at the combination of Mox and Skies to run double ARs. It's going to free up more kills on the map, I think, for Pristini when he wants to go on little cheeky flanks. I like what I saw from him. I like what I'm going to probably see from Florida going into this weekend. I think you start Pristini going into this week. This one's a little bit more easier to tell, but I do want to bring it up because even though Dylan had a great last week and his points totals were not necessarily great for fantasy. So as you go to Dylan, the SMG player with 90% of leagues owning him, do you start him in an SMG spot where he's only averaging 61 points per week? You also see his KD following behind that below a 1.0, a very decent hard point total, a very impressive search and destroy total, and then a kind of lackluster dom total when it comes to the individual rounds. All in all, when you look at Dylan, he's got the third best SMG SND, that's hard to say, search and destroy SMG numbers, 13th overall in points, but with a 21st ranking and a 19th ranking in the dom and in the hard point, do you still start Dylan? Is it worth it? His points participation has not necessarily been great all the way through. My first reaction here is you start Dylan. Not necessarily because he's going to make a big influence when it comes to the respawn, but if he's putting up search and destroy numbers like that, if he can consistently do that, which I think he's shown throughout the entirety of the London weekend and even at the launch weekend, he's going to eventually find a way to open up some more space on the respawn, and his point totals are only going to go up. So I like Dylan in this. He's, again, the objective player, mostly speaking, for London. So you've got to be a little bit cautious, but I think, generally speaking, you got to start Dylan because he does have the potential to absolutely blow up and go off. 
Going next to Kenny. Actually, we've got three OG players down here, so we'll kind of blow through them pretty quickly. Between Kenny Slasher and TJ Halley, what are you going to do, again, with Optic Gaming LA, who has to meet up against Atlanta first, and then we'll get the loser of Florida in London. Again, I don't feel great about that game for Optic Gaming, so I have them kind of losing two games here. I think you got to be mindful of that. So out of those three, which would you start? Which would you sit? We'll start with Kenny first, as he's the first one up. 66 points as an SMG player in his opening weekend. Again, in losing efforts, pretty damn good. He, for Optic Gaming, in my mind, did some of the best work. Again, generally speaking, you take a look at what his stat lines mean over the course of the rankings. He technically ranks eighth overall in SMGs, third best in hardpoint, seventh best in DOM, but search and destroy, not so bueno. He ranks currently 22nd. For the rest of his teammates, though, you take a look at what they've been able to do or maybe not been able to do. You got Slasher, who only participated with 54 points, 0.89 KD. And again, this is the one guy where it felt like the meta was just not at all favoring him whatsoever. Running around with an SMG feels weird to see Slasher do. He technically ranks, though, 13th best in hardpoint, 11th best in search, 10th best in dom. So you kind of wonder, how did you only participate and only get so many points in the draft world if you're putting up decent stat lines across the category? Then you got TJ Halley. Not much to look at here, to be completely honest. He only found 38.5 points. 71% of you own him, and you're wondering, will he find a way to pop off? He was dead last, essentially, in SMGs in every single category, with the exception of hardpoint SMD. He was 27th out of 28, but generally speaking... Uh, He's at the bottom. So which of these do you start? Which of these do you sit? Again, I think we're going to see a meta swap here out of OGLA. I would be surprised if they did not run two ARs coming into it. So with that in mind, do you start or sit any of these players? I think you start Kenny because if that is indeed the case where Slasher will pick up an AR, I think it's going to open up some space for Kenny, again, who's not necessarily the objective player with the SMG, to really find a lot of space and find a lot of kills. We've seen that he's able to do that. If he gets a second AR over the top of him, I think he'll absolutely have a great weekend. It just sucks that they're playing up against a pretty tough group. Slasher and TJ, though, on the other hand, I'm putting down as sit for both of them. I don't like Slasher in the flex role when it comes to draft buff. I don't know what you would list him as otherwise, but in this current meta, he does not look very strong. I think you sit him. TJ, too much of a risk. Not nearly as much of a reward as I think you're looking for. I think you sit him here as well. It's just not worth it in the SMG world. I think there are better options that are generally out there. Going to our last pick, again, Toronto. you got to keep in mind they play Chicago first. Methods, though, did have a solid week this last time around as he was able to find himself an average now between the two weekends of a 68.22. And his rankings are right in the middle of the road with a very impressive total in the domination where he actually ranks fifth amongst ARs. So the question goes, with ARs producing a lot of points, generally speaking, in this current draft buff format, do you start methods even though he's playing up against Chicago who will likely match up against him with two ARs? My answer is no. You don't start him. You absolutely need to sit him, I think. He has showcased the potential of doing well, but I don't necessarily see Toronto not only getting not past Chicago, but I don't necessarily think they're going to win against either Paris or Minnesota. This is the one team, though, going in as the quote-unquote fourth seed in their pool, if you want to call it that, that has the potential to surprise, but I don't see it happening against this pool. So I would say sit uh, methods. Don't bother with it. Find another AR option. Uh, if you possibly can, which brings us now to the waiver wire. Here is a player that's currently sitting on the majority of fantasy league free agent markets that I don't know. Last week, we chose Kismet to be our waiver wire pick of the week. He played well. Did he have as much of a big week as he did in the first week? Not necessarily, but I still think he generated you more points than maybe some other options that are out there. So how about this guy coming up on your screen? It's Dens. If you have not picked up Dens yet, what in God's name is your league doing? Flat out. 32% of leagues own him. He's an AR player that's averaging 81.64 points per week at a 1.25 KD average. And now I know Nameless on contesting the point went off saying Denz was not a top five player in this game. I'm sorry, Ant, I love you, but he is currently a top five player in this game. Pick up this guy. As far as points generation goes, AR players are going to be providing a lot of it for you, and he has showcased that not only is he super consistent, but take a look at that gosh darn hard point average. 41 points on average on hard point. 
I actually need to double check that to make sure it's not a mistake because god damn that's stupid. No, that is not a mistake. I'm looking at it right here, 41.62 points on average in the hard point. That's ridiculous. His average KD is 1.29. It's wild. It's absolutely silly. Pick him up. Stop being out there and not having him. That's been Fantasy Now for you guys when I hold shift. I'll be getting a predictions video guys out for you as far as individual things as well as some betting lines for you. If you like the video, make sure you hit that like button. And of course, subscribe if you want to get notifications when my videos do pop up. Ring the notification bell on your way out. Until the next one, hope you guys keep holding it down. Later, later. Bye-bye.